untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-black reanimator deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring Olivia, Crimson Bride as her commander. The 6-mana 3-4 legendary vampire noble has flying and haste, and whenever Olivia attacks, we can return target creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield, tapped and attacking, and it gains when we don't control a legendary vampire, we have to exile this creature. So Olivia can be a very effective reanimator commander as long as we build our deck around it, which is exactly what we've done here. So I've split up the deck into a few different categories to make it easier to go over each one, starting out at one mana with a few discard spells, where we've got Thoughtseize, Inquisition of Kozilek and Duress, mostly to take away opposing counter spells and maybe instant speed removal that could otherwise kill Olivia before we get to have any fun. Then the next category is Ramp, where we have Dark Ritual adding triple black, and then a few Ramp artifacts with Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, and Mind Stone at 2 mana. And then Hazard's Monument discounts red creature spells by 1 mana, and whenever we cast any creature spell, we get to discard a card, and if we do, draw a card. So these looting effects, as they're known, are very useful in any reanimator deck, as we get to discard our expensive creatures to afterwards get back maybe with Olivia or a different reanimation spell. Then Key to the Archive helps us ramp by adding 2 mana, and then when it enters we also get to draft a card from the 15 card spellbook, which can be quite powerful, but for the most part we're interested in this as a ramp artifact that also makes us potentially discard a card from our hand, so it can once again function as a discard outlet. And then Goldspan Dragon counts as both a creature we can cast or reanimate by making treasures when it attacks, even after the alchemy fix is still quite powerful. Then the next category is Removal, where both Bone Shards and Lightning Axe can also function as discard outlets by discarding one of our creatures when we cast them. And then a Lightning Bolt, Heartless Act, Power Word Kill are just instant speed removal that's quite efficient. Angrath's Rampage can make the opponent sacrifice an artifact, creature or planeswalker. Sweltering Suns and Extinction Event are the two sweepers of choice. And then Shatter Skull Smashing can be both a land or a removal spell. Then the next category is the discard and draw effects, where we have at 1 mana Faithless Looting can also be flashed back for 3 mana to draw 2 and then discard 2. We've got Cathartic Pyre, which can also be a removal spell dealing 3 to a creature or planeswalker, but for the most part we're going to use it to discard up to 2 cards and then draw that many, and Cathartic Reunion can discard 2 as an additional cost to draw 3. Faithless Salvaging has rebound, so we get to cast it once, and then in our next upkeep we get to cast it a second time for free. We've got Thrill of Possibility, discards one to draw two, Tormenting Voice the same at sorcery speed, and then Honor the God Pharaoh also does the same, makes us a 1-1 zombie army token, and Seize the Spoils makes a treasure token in the process. And then Fast can discard a card to draw two, and Furious can also be cast as a 5 mana sweeper, dealing three to each creature without flying. And then Pirate Spillage and Unexpected Windfall are probably the best ones, as they also ramp us making two treasures, which is perfect for casting an Olivia on the following turn. Then if the Olivia reanimation game plan doesn't work out, we have other reanimation spells available, all at 5 mana, including Bond of Revival, which also gives a creature haste, so that's one of the best ones. We've got Cauldron's Gift, can maybe mill some additional creatures into our graveyard first. Return Upon the Tide can be foretold to then cast it for 4 mana. We've got Arise again as the most basic reanimation spell, Unbreakable Bond will put a lifelink counter on our creature, which can be quite useful in the more aggressive matchups, also protects it from opposing copies of Heartless Act, as one of the more popular 2-mana removal spells. We've got Young Necromancer, a 2-3 creature, exiles 2 other cards from our graveyard, and then reanimates a target creature. And then Edgar's Awakening, a 5-mana reanimation spell, can also pay 1 black mana if we discard it, to simply return a creature from our graveyard to our hand, which can maybe come up and then Liliana Death's Majesty can make zombie tokens and mill additional cards into our graveyard with the plus one, and the minus three reanimates a creature and also turns it into a zombie. Then the next category of cards are all legendary vampires, because as you may recall, Olivia says when we don't control a legendary vampire we have to exile the reanimated creature, so if we have other legendary vampires in play besides Olivia, we can keep our reanimated creatures in play even if our opponent answers Olivia, which is very important to have that built-in insurance sometimes. So at 4 mana, there's the Maid of Dishonor, a 4-5 legendary vampire that when it enters or another vampire enters can make blood tokens, and then we can use those blood tokens to discard more expensive creatures to then reanimate. 
We've got Drana, the last blood chief, a 4-4 flyer, and when Drana attacks, the opponent can choose a non-legendary creature in our graveyard that we get to reanimate and turn into a vampire. We've got the Haunt of Hightower, a 3-3 flyer with lifelink that when it attacks makes the opponent discard. Now keep in mind both Haunt of Hightower and Drana will not trigger if we reanimate them with Olivia because they're already put in play tapped and attacking, but they're still going to be very useful on the following turns. And then whenever a card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, we can put a plus on plus one counter on it. Then Zagros is a 4-4 flyer with Death Touch and Haste, giving other creatures we control Death Touch. And whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to a Planeswalker, we get to destroy it. And finally, Kazarov, a 4-4 flyer, picks up plus on plus one counters whenever a creature an opponent controls is dealt damage. And we can use the 4-mana activated ability to enable it by dealing 2 damage to target creature. And then the final category of cards are just big expensive creatures we want to reanimate, including Doom Whisper, a 6-6 flyer with a trample, can pay 2 life to surveil 2, also very useful for filling our graveyard with additional creatures. We've got Ox of Agonos, which can be escaped out of the graveyard, and when it enters makes us discard our hand to draw 3, so a nice way to refuel, and can also act as an additional discard outlet. We've got the Burning Rune Demon, a 6-6 flyer that when it enters makes us choose two cards out of our library. One of them the opponent can choose to put into our graveyard, the other one goes into our hand. So we can maybe search up two big creatures, one of them will be able to reanimate, the other one we can maybe hard cast or discard. Then we've got Demon Lord Belzenlock, a 6-6 flying trampler that can provide card advantage when he enters. Noxious Gearhulk can destroy an opposing creature and gain life equal to its toughness. Massacre Worm will give opposing creatures minus 2 minus 2 until end of turn, and also makes the opponent lose 2 life whenever their creatures die. Then Combustible Gearhulk is a 6 6 first strike that when it enters can either mill the top 3 cards of our library and then deal damage to the opponent equal to the total mana value of those cards, which can quickly add up given all these expensive creatures, or the opponent can decide to let us draw 3 cards instead. We've got Morog, which can potentially give us additional combat steps by playing a land in our second main phase, so it can also set up some pretty sweet combos with Olivia if we've got multiple creatures to reanimate. We've got the Archfiend of Soros, another creature with a built-in sweeper, giving opposing creatures minus 2 minus 2 when it enters on a 4-5 flying body. Can also unearth it from our graveyard, which means we bring it back with haste, and then it goes away end of turn. Then we've got the Demon of Loathing, a 7-7 Flying Trampler, that when it deals combat damage to a player makes them sacrifice a creature, also very good with haste. Shieldred, Whispering One, a 6-6 with a Swamp Walk, and at the beginning of the opponent's upkeep they have to sacrifice a creature, and at the beginning of our upkeep we get to reanimate a creature, so also very powerful once it gets going. And then Angrath's Marauders can double our damage output. We've got Terror of Mount Velas giving our creatures double strike when it enters, can also be a great finisher. And then a Draquiseth, also not the best synergy with Olivia because it's not going to trigger when we reanimate it, but still a 7-7 flyer that when it attacks deals 4 damage to any target and 3 damage to each of up to 2 other targets, so it can also be quite devastating. Then Torgar is a 7-6 that when it enters a battlefield says up to one target player's life total becomes 12 in Historic Brawl, since it's half of 25 rounded down, so we can potentially put the opponent's life total to 12 while attacking them with a 7 power Torgar and a 3 powered Olivia, so that can put them to 2, so very close to dead. Can also potentially put our life total back to 12 if we're lower in a pinch. And then Villas, an 8-8 flyer, that when we lose life can draw that many cards, and the ability can also enable that card draw ability. And then finally Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, a 10, 10 indestructible, that will potentially mill the opponent out as well. And then a mana base is very straightforward, got a couple fetch lands for mana fixing, plenty of dual lands, and then a few utility lands include Hive of the Eye Tyrant, and then the Den of the Bugbear as another creature land, as well as our castle for additional card draw. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Nahab the Worthy, potentially a Minotaur deck. And if our opponent makes us discard, that could actually be helpful to reanimate our creatures. Although Bone Shards can also discard Villas to eventually bring back. Alright, it is Minotaur Tribal. Turn to Visionary. Do I want to Bone Shards the Visionary here? Probably not in a hurry to do so. Herald's Horn to discount their Minotaurs. 
triggers prowess, so we'll take three. And an Inquisition can have a look. Alright, opponents got a Hazard's Monument, another Minotaur, and a Bone Shards, which is the pick here. And then can wait another turn on casting Bone Shards. And then hopefully find land 5. Nahab, Dreadhor Champion on top. So nice find with Herald's Horn. There's my land. Alright, we'll uh, kill the Worthy here, I suppose. Discard Villas. And then next turn we can maybe go for a Cauldron's Gift or a gold span to then send up Olivia on the following turn. Opponent does trigger Nahab the Eternal, so they found all the Nahabs here. And this Fanatic of Mogus also threatening to deal quite a bit of damage. Massacre Worm, an interesting draw. So... Am I dead if I just play gold span attack? Next turn opponent hits me for 11, and this will have enough devotion. So I actually cannot attack. I could just reanimate Villas for 5 mana, which is probably going to be the play, and then go for Cauldron in case we mill over something even better. We did not. I've got a 9 9 Villas. We'll see if that's enough. But Harold's Horn hasn't missed a beat. Finding an extra Minotaur every turn. The mana discount also quite relevant. And, uh, yeah, and to have the Worthy pumping their Minotaurs by two would be quite devastating indeed. Opponent goes for Bloodline Pretender into Slaughter Priests. And attacks. Well, at least Villas gets to draw a few cards here. Opponent's got four mana. No black mana for Infernal Grasp, but a Fanatic of Mogus puts us to six. And a Burning Fist Minotaur. Alright, so we could play Massacre Worm. Gonna be true to its name. Leaving three creatures on the other side. We'll have two blockers, so... Yeah, I think that's uh, probably my best bet. Opponent's at 14, so can't quite kill them on the way back. I would like to discard some expensive creatures to them potentially reanimate, so the discard to hand size actually comes in handy. So Marauders and maybe a Torgar we can discard. And I might want to keep Noxious Geralk in hand to hard cast. And then Cold Steel Hearts is not going to be too useful. Same with uh, Thoughtseize, I think. Could have also gone for Furious. I think we're better off with a Massacre Worm. So time for Monuments into Nahab Dreadhorde Champion. Now the Eternal does have Afflict 3, so blocking it is still scary. Opponent forced to pass and should be able to figure out something powerful here. So at the very least I could Noxious Gearhulk, gain some life back. Or Olivia bring back Angrath's Marauders. Opponent can jump Villas with the Minotaur Sure Shot. And then they would still be taking 6 from Olivia. And then forced to trade. So it's not a guaranteed lethal line. If I play Gear Hulk, kill the Sure Shots. Opponent takes 2 from Massacre Worm. Down to 12. 
So I need to find three more damage somewhere. Um, which I don't think I'm gonna find. So yeah, let's just go for Gear Hulk. And then probably kill the Pretender, gain six. Play this tanked. And uh, we'll play it safe and keep everyone back. Because their opponent does get to pump their team here with Nahab. And then next turn we'll find a way to attack for the win. Opponent sends everyone. Their creatures do have first strike, we have to remember. So if I block Nahab, I take three from Afflict as well. So I can block here. Trump here, because this tramples. Opponent gets to add a bunch of mana, which doesn't matter. And we go down to two. That seems fine. And Villa's drawing a lot of cards. Opponent falls to 10. And now it should be trivial. Olivia attack, bring back anything. So very close game against Minotaurs. The card draw from Villas certainly coming in handy. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play facing a Joda slash Keruga deck. So five color ramp basically. My hand does have an answer to Joda, which is important. The rest of my hand leaves a lot to be desired. Really need a discard effect to put some of these expensive creatures in the graveyard to kick things off. So is this good enough on the play? I don't think so. I'm just not going to be doing anything besides keep up removal for Joda, which they can play around. This hand is not much better. We picked up an extra land, lost our removal. And we're still waiting for a discard effect. Alright, this one we can try. And then... Probably want to keep the young necromancer to potentially reanimate with five mana. And what's the best to reanimate? Shieldred seems like a good one. Even though with Joda they could cast stuff in their upkeep. Although they would have to be instant speed, so that's probably good enough. And then would I rather bring back Villas eventually or Morog? I could see Morog doing some work. So let's try this. Just need to hit my land drops with the Faithful Salvaging to eventually cast a Young Necromancer. Lightning Axe, also not a bad draw. So we've got two answers to Joda now. Gonna keep digging for lands. Discard Kazarov. And play my tap land. Alright, so we've got Joda covered. And we're starting to assemble enough lands to kind of progress our own game plan. So land 5 gonna be very important. Opponents ramping with a vessel, not going for Joda, which makes sense. Well, I picked up a key to the archive, which is probably worth playing then. And Demonic Tutor might be the pick here, although I don't really expect to cast it anytime soon. Putrefy could destroy their vessel for what it's worth. Tutor could find a reanimation spell, although it seems a little bit redundant. 
don't think I'm going to be keeping up Counterspell necessarily. I guess we'll go with the Tutor and then discard Gear Hulk, even though I could also hard cast it. Kyura Bus the Sea God. Alright, it's a pretty good card. So. Do I have anything that can make the opponent sacrifice a creature if I reanimate it? So we can cast Olivia, which will bring back Shieldred, which will make them sacrifice their Kraken, or opponent does control a Swamp. So a Swamp Walk is also active, and then we want to keep up Lightning Axe and Lightning Bolts. So Kraken down. Opponent does get to tap our stuff and eventually steal our best permanence, but hopefully Shieldred can provide some value in the meantime. And if they kill Olivia, we can let her go to the graveyard to maybe necromance her back. Opponent going for Paradox Engine, okay. So two mana left, but doesn't look like they have anything. So, can bring back Morog, and then I might actually Demonic Tutor for a Fabled Passage, strangely enough. Because that would give me two Landfall Triggers. One to untap my team right now, and one to uh, get a second attack step in. Attack, get back Kazarov, and yeah, we managed to combo kill our opponents, beating Kurobas the Sea God. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing the first sliver, five color sliver deck, and our hand is missing a big creature to put in the graveyard, but I think we can still keep this. I'll get my fetch land out of the way. Turn to Temple, can scry into something big. And then turn three, we can hopefully discard it. Bond of Revival seems a bit redundant here. And then probably seize the spoils. I'll discard. Could go for Fast Furious. Or could go for one of the five mana reanimation spells. Let's try this. Next turn I can play Keef, nothing else. And so we still haven't found a creature. Can't wait on looting. Alright, Massacre Worm could be alright. So I can go digging for a different expensive creature, or I can just play Key, discard Worm, set up Olivia for next turn. And probably a Lightning Bolt to pick here. And then I can still wait on looting. There's no real need to cast it now. So we're point with a pretty slow start. No ramp. But we can expect the first sliver to appear next turn. So do I want to go for Olivia here? Do I want to keep digging? I guess we can go for looting as the cheapest draw discard effect. Did not find anything useful. So maybe get rid of these two. Then I can still reunion, discarding maybe bolt and a land. Still no additional creatures. And then... Yeah, I'm tempted to just go for an unexpected windfall here instead. To keep digging once again. And probably no reason to do it now. Even though I could use the treasures to flashback looting once again. 
bringing back Massacre Worm on an empty board doesn't sound too appealing. Right, another attack plan from our opponent, so... I'll discard Swamp. <laughs> More reanimation spells. Alright, there we go, Doom Whisper, so that can fill my graveyard nicely. So let's start there. And then I could still cast an Olivia if I wanted to. So I think we proactively start filling the yard. Goldspan and Zagras. Zagras stays in play even if Olivia gets answered. Goldspan has great synergy with the treasures already in play. Although if we're gonna sacrifice him here anyway, I guess it doesn't matter. So, yeah, I guess we'll bin both to then uh, reanimate. And I think I still go for Olivia for the haste. And we'll go with uh, Zagros here. And then even in the event of a sweeper, still have three reanimation spells in hand. So we can let Olivia go to the graveyard to then bring back. First sliver cascades into Tybalt's trickery. I see. Okay. And what are we hitting? Cultivator Colossus. And that's gonna probably put their entire deck in play. So that was their plan all along. So our opponent's gonna have one incredibly large Cultivator Colossus. And uh, yeah, we just gotta deal 19 damage, which we're very close to with a gold span in the graveyard. So this explains why our opponent hasn't been doing anything. Can also bring back Massacre Worm, but that of course doesn't fly. I guess we can bring back both, but they can just block the Massacre Worm. Although it does have Death Touch, so I guess it would still trade for the Colossus. So I guess it would be good enough. Putting might gain a bit of life of uh, their various gain lands. So I guess it wouldn't necessarily be at 19 when this is over. So yeah, our opponent's deck is just all lands. Tibble's Trickery, which they're guaranteed to hit with uh, Cascade. And then Colossus, which they hopefully don't draw, so they're guaranteed to find it with Tibal's Trickery. Not sure if they have any other win conditions, but I don't think so. So it's gonna take a while for them to put all 90 plus lands in play. But I guess we'll wait. And then could still flashback looting next turn. In addition to casting a reanimation spell in the hopes of finding some other big creature to bring back. But the default would be Goldspan and Massacre Worm. And hope that's good enough. Because we're not going to survive an attack from the Colossus, that's for sure. Do have a Doom Whisper as well, so might as well put an upkeep stop, surveil as much as possible with a Doom Whisper to find the perfect creature to reanimate. Or at the very least, a removal spell for Colossus, which would also be fine here. So I guess cue some elevator music while we wait.
All right, opponent satisfied with an 83-83 Colossus. Gains a bunch of life. And gets to scry. That's a lot of temples. Didn't think I've ever seen this many lines in play at the same time. Alright, so... Upkeep. Surveil with the Doom Whisper. And Morog. Seems like a good one to put in the graveyards. Although, I guess their opponent would block it before I get a chance to take an extra combat step with him. Says it's still useful. I mean, I guess we'll graveyard it and then keep digging. I'm sure we can find something that guarantees the win. Fabled Passage. I guess still doesn't quite do it with Morog since... We would have to wait until the second main phase to untap our creatures. So we'll keep digging. The Maid of Dishonor can drain for two perhaps, but... We got a few more looks. Villas hits for 8. Is that enough? We're getting close, so 10, 13, 21 plus a gold span should do it, so... Yeah, I think we're happy to draw now. And Grass Rampage would also deal with uh, Colossus here for good measure. And then... Can reanimate a gold span dragon. Attack, and Olivia can bring back Phyllis. All right, sweet. Not worth the wait, I'm not sure, but here we are, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing Ajani, the Great Hearted, plus one counter deck, and I mean, our hand is pretty straightforward. Reanimate an Ulamog, potentially pretty early thanks to a Dark Ritual. So turn two I can Pyre, and then turn three I can return Ulamog already. And we'll see how our opponent deals with that. Could also kill the Moondancer, take a slower approach. Evolution Sage. Discarding Archfiends, also tempting. So, is that safer here? Kill the opponent's two creatures, make a 4-5 flyer. As opposed to play Ulamog, which... Could get exiled, for all we know. I guess we'll discard both for now. Right, another reanimation spell. So maybe I should just kill the two creatures now, and then we can bring back Ulamog later. I might as well go for lifelink. So now we've got a nice flyer to pressure their planeswalker. Inquisition can have a look and find a source to plowshares, which would have been the perfect answer to Ulamog, and our opponent concedes. All right, so on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing Kenrith, the returned king, five color, and uh, my hand is missing a big creature, but I do have two different discard outlets and reanimation spells and temple to scry. 
So we should be able to find something decent to put in the graveyard. And a Heartless Act I probably don't need right now, even though it could eventually answer Kenrith. Gotta be a bit more proactive, I think. So not a whole lot going on in the early turns. Next turn I can cast fast, even if I don't have a creature yet. Just to kind of cycle through the deck. And then set up a Pirate's Village on the following turn. Right. Honor the God Pharaoh could also work. So fast is an instance. So maybe I go for the Sorcery Speed Honor. And then what to discard. Next turn I could maybe pay the one for Edgar's Awakening as well, but I also don't see that being too relevant. So I guess we would rather make a 1-1 one -one token in the process. And then I probably get rid of Fast and Furious. Hang on to Pirate Spillage. Alright, Torgar will be a nice one to reanimate. So we can curve Pirate Spillage into Olivia, bring back Torgar. And that could deal a ton of damage, half the opponent's life total, plus hit them for 10. Goes a long way. Alright, opponent on a 5 color Shrines deck, preparing for the upcoming Kamigawa. We'll discard Torgar. And I guess we'll hit for one. Zombie probably dies to the Honden. And then hope there's no instant speed removal for Olivia. And if they do answer Olivia, we can always decide to let her go to the graveyard to them bring back, as opposed to back to the command zone. Demon Lord the draw. Could also just cast a Demon Lord here if I fear instant speed removal. And then we're not overextending into a sweeper either, so that seems fine. And if they kill the Demon Lord, then uh, we're not too upset. Opponent does have the Infernal Grasp. Still get to draw. Picked up just the Sweltering Suns, sadly. So we'll see what they do here. And then we can uh, decide if it's time for Olivia. Opponent goes for Kenrith. Okay. So don't quite have the mana to go Hazrat's Monument into Olivia. But, yeah, casting Olivia, getting back. Torgar seems decent, so let's do that. Opponent can take 10 down to 2. Or they can chump. Yeah, opponent's at 2. So now a hasty Olivia. Could potentially finish off our opponents. Although Kenrith can of course gain 5 life with a white ability. Opponent only has a 1 white mana, so they cannot gain 10. But instant speed removal on Olivia could be effective. It's gonna be a binding instead. So yeah, we'll let Olivia go to the graveyard. Torgar's gone. And next turn we can bring back a Demon Lord. Might let's go for Unbreakable Bond over Edgar's Awakening in case the opponent's holding up Heartless Act, which cannot destroy a creature with a counter on it. And then I even get to Lightning Axe Kenrithir, so if I wanted to I could... Discard Terror and then reanimate Terror instead. I think going for Demon Lord is fine in case they do have removal. That uh, deals with Olivia. So we get to smash, put a Demon Lord in play, and that's game. Finding Dracoseth and the rest along the way. 
sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Muldrotha, the Gravetide deck. And my hand is missing a land or two, but it's got potential. Temple to scry into a land, hopefully. Monument for a bit of acceleration for at least our Olivia. And Swamp will keep. Alright, so two good draws. Still need a second red source. But I don't think I could afford to be too picky with my land. Monument still sets up on Olivia on the following turn. And we can use Doom Whisper to fill the graveyard. So just need an extra land, ideally a mountain. That'll do. So, don't know if our opponent's keeping up a counter spell. If they are, probably gonna go with Instant Speed Windfall over Doom Whisper here. And then we can set up our Olivia for next turn. Now, casting Olivia could also discard with Monument to get some immediate value, but there's still the counter spell concern. Nissa untapping Island instead of Breeding Pool, so it doesn't appear that they have a counter spell they wanna keep up. At least not a two mana counter. And then Shield Root seems like a good one to discard here. Ooh, Hulamog as well. Take three. Okay, so I can Tormenting Voice and Olivia. Probably want to try and deal with Nyssa if possible. Or at least force them to chump, which we can if we bring back Shieldred. Although it would be better to bring back Haunt of Hightower first, so we have a second Legendary Vampire in case anything goes wrong and they can answer Olivia with a Bounce Spell. And then with the two Flyers we can also finish off Nyssa. So let's start there actually. So both at Nyssa. And then next turn we can bring back our Shieldred. And I'll hang on to Tormenting Voice for now. Alright, Rivers Rebuke, not what I wanted to see. That's the reason to cast the Tormenting Voice last turn. Alright, we'll put that back in hands. So that's quite the reset button. So how do we want to continue? Can go for Guardian Idol Hazardous Monuments. And then we can just kick things off next turn with Olivia. Seems fine. Doom Whisper also an option. And then discard to hand size. How about Ulamog? So you'll be able to bring back, or I can once again go for Haunts to have that built-in insurance. But we can always discard next turn, so I guess discarding the Haunt of Hightower if they know about might be fine. And then next turn we can always discard Ulamog. Opponent does go for Muldrotha. Opponent does also have a Swamp in play now, so Shieldred's also more appealing than before. But I also still like the idea of uh, getting that second Legendary Vampire in play first. So let's go with Haunt of Hightower. And then probably find to Tormenting Voice. Discard Ox. So Muldrotha could replay Nissa if they wanted to. It's gonna be Garruk. Can kill Olivia, but I get to keep my haunt. And don't have another reanimation spell in hand, so probably gonna send Olivia back to the command zone. Where we can still replay her for seven. 
Now, Drana doesn't trigger if we reanimate her with Olivia. So, don't think it matters too much here. Can still discard Drana to eventually get back. And then now we can bring back Shieldred, perhaps. Didn't quite have enough for lethal. Heartless Act kills Shieldred, but still triggers. The Haunt also keeps growing. They can replay land from the graveyard, so the fact that they discarded lands doesn't matter too much with the Muldrothai in play. But yeah, only 4 mana available. Counterpart copies Olivia. Okay, this could get interesting. Is there any creature to reanimate? Not quite. But, uh... Yeah, if they had something expensive in the graveyard, this could have been scary. And for a single blue, they could technically still have some interaction. But, uh, yeah. Opponent packs it in. Sweet, so cool game here, getting to see the Haunt of Hightower in action. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Hamza, green-white plus one counter deck, and our hand seems quite amazing. We've got early discards to put an extra vampire in the graveyard, followed by the uh, Arcane Signet and Dark Ritual to ramp out Olivia. Hardened skills can be quite scary. So, can go for Signet here. Next turn, Tormenting Voice, turn after Olivia. Animation module, that's fine. And a Stone Coil for one comes into play with an extra counter but no mana to pay for the servo. Alright, so a Tormenting Voice discards Kazarov, I think, over Burning Rune Demon still. In case they have an answer to Olivia, at least this is another legendary vampire. And then we can duress to have a look. And nothing that we can take. Alright, so... Opponent gets to play some creatures here. And next turn we get to reanimate Kazarov. Opponent could keep Stone Call on defense as a reach creature with protection from multicolored, but of course they can't expect us to already play Olivia here. So Ritual into Olivia can even play Evolving Wilds. And next turn we can hard cast a Burning Rune Demon. Or we can maybe start activating Kazarov to ping down some creatures. And Kazarov will be able to kill Stone Coil. Alright, so if I play Burning Rune pre combat, I can choose two great creatures and one of them will be able to reanimate. So I'm thinking I can Angras Marauders as one of them, which would present 14 in the air at the very least, plus they would have to chum block. And then the second card, maybe the Terror of Mount Velas, would be a, a good one too. And then, uh, yeah, one of those two should be enough to put us in a winning spot. So yeah, sometimes the deck can be incredibly explosive if you draw the right mix of discard, 
big creature reanimation spell. Other times you can maybe draw too many of the same kinds and then the deck doesn't really do what it's designed to. So it's a little bit hit and miss, but for the most part, given the free mulligan, you should be able to work with a functional hand that at the very least reanimates a creature in a timely fashion. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.